from MTN News, this is Montana This Morning. The jury vote was split on the two deliberate homicide charges for Zachary Norman of Three Forks. So what happens now? Well, we're bringing you those details right off the top. I'm Edgar Cidio in Bozeman. This campus right behind me will soon turn into affordable housing. I'll tell you how it'll work coming up. I'm Jonathan Amberian in Helena. Montana's Superintendent of Public Instruction is asking for more guidance from the federal government on how a new policy might affect things like hunter education programs in schools. I'm Megan Thompson and I'm here at the Holy Trinity Serbian Orthodox Church here in Butte where parishioners are busy making food ahead of the annual festival this weekend. Alrighty, it is 6.30 on this Thursday edition of Montana yep. This Morning. Jay McDonald and Matt Elwell with you. Little, is that haze or is that just low I think clouds? There's a, well, I think there's a mixture of both. Mm -hmm. We still have some smoke in our skies. Uh, yeah. Helena uh, just had a little change in their air quality. I'll talk oh, a little bit about okay. that here coming up. Uh, morning temperatures, not all that uh, cool yeah. for the most part. Uh, a lot of areas into the 50s even 60 degrees wow. this morning in Belgrade. Light rain falling in West Yellowstone. We'll see some of that moisture kind of travel through uh, uh, the mountains back in toward Bozeman as you get into the day today. I don't look for real heavy sh rain showers in the Bozeman mm -hmm. area or really uh, anywhere to be quite honest. Temperatures remain pretty chilly with the cloud cover and moisture in place for today. The wind speeds between 10 and 20 miles an hour. Uh, Butte a little warmer for the afternoon. But you may not want to uh, forget about your rain jacket. I'll talk about when you may need that and for how long coming up in just a few. All right, thank you very much, Matt. Now, we have new information on a Three Forks man accused of killing two brothers. On July 28th, the jury found Zach Norman, the man accused of shooting and killing Brendan and Chase Estabrook, guilty of tampering with or fabricating physical evidence, but was hung on the two deliberate homicide charges. The jury vote was split, 10 for guilty and two for not guilty on both counts. The Essenberg brothers were gunned down near 6th and Ash in Three Forks. Lawyers for Norman claimed the shooting was in self-defense. The county attorney turned over the case to the attorney general's office, citing insufficient staffing to try the case. According to the AG's office, because of the hung jury, prosecutors are able to refile the case and will be doing so later this month. Prosecutors Jordan Salo and Michael Gee will stay on the case and see it through the end. In the meantime, Norman remains behind bars at the Gallatin County Detention Center. And Chico Hot Springs is now under new ownership. Diamond Rock Hospitality Company out of Maryland announced yesterday they acquired the Chico Hot Spring Resort. Diamond Rock purchased the resort and ranch adjacent for $33 million. Chico Hot Springs Resort is a western-style resort located in the heart of Paradise Valley and convenient to the only year-round vehicle entrance to Yellowstone National Park. The Diamond Rock Hospitality Company owns 36 hotels and resorts across the country in states like California, Florida, and Colorado. In a press release, officials with Diamond Rock believe there are significant opportunities to enhance revenues, implement yield management, and broaden distribution channels through Chico Hot Springs Resort. And it's no surprise that affordable housing is hard to come by in the Gallatin Valley, and that has led many groups in the Valley to try to get creative to provide housing for people struggling to make ends meet. MTN's Edgar Cedillo shows us how one local nonprofit was able to create some affordable housing. Family Promise says they've had such a high demand for families across the valley needing emergency housing, but that luckily is all going to change with the purchase of this campus right behind me. Like cleaning, touching up paint, all of that kind of stuff. And then I came to Bozeman not knowing anybody. Literally just the kids and I came here, didn't know anybody. Anastasia Nisco moved to Bozeman with her three kids. After moving to Bozeman, getting back on her feet was a struggle. Tough to find housing right now. Um, a lot of things are closing, like help-wise. Um, funding is not there anymore. Crystal Chevelichek says that they get dozens of calls weekly from families needing help. So Family Promise says they work to find a solution. Um, families are leaving the area. It's too expensive to live here, which is just going to continue our um, economic problem of people not going to, you know, not having people to hire. 
Their solution was to buy the former Montana Bible College. The campus has dozens of rooms that will be able to house families. So every family will be assigned a bedroom and they'll have their own bathroom and then they'll have this. So what we're really hoping to do with this building is to have more opportunities so families can be served and start that journey to um, self-sustainability here in the Valley. They were able to buy the $7 million campus, which they say will provide much needed services. We will offer emergency shelter, transitional housing, and then affordable housing for families in our Valley as well. Their goal is to move fast and get people the help that they need. Yeah, so right away we'll be able to serve about 30 families and then there's some minor renovations and some construction that will have to be done, but all in all we'll think that this property will serve about 100 families a year. Family Promise says that they're now asking for the community's help to raise money and to help with the restoration. Most excitement about this is how many families that they're able to help. Family Promise says they'll be able to start putting families into these units in the next couple of weeks. In Bozeman, Edgar Cidio, MTN News. Thank you very much, Edgar. Now in statewide headlines, Montana Superintendent of Public Education, Elsie Artson, says the Biden administration is withholding funds to schools that offer hunting courses. Some groups, including the Sportsman Alliance, say they're looking into legal options into the issue. MTN's chief political reporter, Jonathan Nambirian, is taking a closer look at what this means for Montana. Superintendent of Public Instruction, Elsie Arnson, says that new guidance from the U.S. Department of Education related to dangerous weapons leaves many unanswered questions, especially in a rural state like Montana. There's a lot of what-ifs. The questions come out of the Bipartisan Safer Communities Act passed last year, which included gun safety laws and also investments in mental health and school safety programs. One section of that law prevented certain federal education dollars from being used to provide someone with a dangerous weapon or train them in using a weapon. National media reports, including from Fox News, highlighted concerns from hunting education advocates, who said the department's interpretation of that section meant that funding couldn't go toward hunting and archery programs. Programs. Arnson released a statement Tuesday asking the department to take Montana's values and rural culture into account in its handling of the law. My purpose is to make sure that our public schools have the autonomy and the authority granted by our state statutes also adhering to the federal law. She asked for clarification on whether the federal law affects hunter safety courses taught on school campuses, archery education including as part of indigenous culture, and Montana's school marshal program, which allows districts to hire active or retired law enforcement to provide security on campus. Montana received $4.8 million in school grants through the Safer Communities Act, and Arnson says she particularly wants to be able to give the districts that receive those grants a clear indication of how they can use the money. We're very rural communities across our state. We want to make sure that one size does not fit all. On Wednesday, U.S. Senator John Tester sent a letter to the Department of Education asking them to reverse course on what he called a misinterpretation and allow federal funding for school archery and hunting education. MTN is awaiting a statement from the department. A frequently asked questions document they produced says grant funds can go towards school resource officers but can't be used to arm teachers or train them in using weapons. Arnson says she hopes to hear additional clarification from the Department of Education as soon as possible so she can give school districts direction on how they should move forward. In Helena, Jonathan Amberian, MTN News. An issue we'll absolutely keep up to date on. Now, Butte is celebrating culture through food. MTN's Megan Thompson gives us a little taste of Serbian culture in the mining city. Well, Butte is a melting pot of cultures, and this weekend it is the Serbians' turn to celebrate their heritage with the annual Serbian Food Festival. This week, we have had all of our parishioners and some of our friends come and help bake with us all week long. And the church kitchen has been busy with a team of people chopping apples, kneading dough, and popping food in and out of the ovens. But cooking like this hasn't always been a tradition for some of the parishioners. Well, you had it almost every day. And so you were lucky that you had the grandparents, the aunts, the moms, the dads that could cook that way. Denise says recent generations didn't have as much experience cooking Serbian food, but the festival is helping to revive the tradition. Because it kind of pops when you put the syrup on. Maybe kind of come to our generation. We weren't as good as that you know, little bit of fast food here and there for your kids, and then when you served a dinner like this, it'd be rare. 
And Denise says traditional food is just as much a part of youth fabric as it is a part of the church community, with different ethnic backgrounds adding their own twist to foods like apple pita or povetitsa. And we all make it just beautifully and so yummy. <laughs> yeah. The festival is a fundraiser, and Denise says this year's proceeds are going to help renovate the church kitchen. You know, we built this in 1965, 64, and so our kitchen's ready for an overhaul. So um, we are adding to the back and to the front of the kitchen. So all of the chopping, peeling, and kneading will bring a new kitchen that will help keep this festival. Um, the church encourages the community to join in the food, dancing, and church tours. Come in and celebrate with us. Like I always say, Butte is a special place where we celebrate everybody's ethnic backgrounds here. And this weekend is Serb Fest. We're celebrating the Serbian heritage. And so please come join us and, and share in the fun and share with our uh, ethnic heritage and the food that we eat and, and enjoy. In Butte, Megan Thompson, MTN News. That just looks fantastic. Thank you very much for sharing that with us, Megan.